Chameleon game. Chameleons change their color to fit their surroundings, and it's called camouflage. And they camouflage in order to survive. They, or, they camouflage in order to survive so that other predators won't be able to see them. And today, we are here to talk about Korea as a chameleon, playing the chameleon game. I'm Lena Lim. And I'm Yu Jong Lee. The three players that will play in this chameleon game will be China, Korea, and Japan. How to play. The three surroundings that they will be in is Arena 1, Korean War, Arena 2, Maritime Disputes, Arena, and Arena 3, Trilateral Relationships. Um, as a chameleon, they will um, go through some levels of color changes. Level 1, inter Interest, Level 2, Stakes, and Level 3, Actions. Start. Arena 1, Korean War. As you can see in the diagram, the Korean War can be divided into four stages. And going over it briefly, first North Korea invaded South Korea and almost unified the whole country until UN forces and mainly US forces came in and pushed the North Koreans back up to the northern border. And they almost reunified the Korean Peninsula when the Chinese got involved and they pushed them back, they pushed the South Koreans back down until the war became stagnant at the 38th parallel. And there are two key players that we analyzed, China and Japan. China had its own interest in helping out in the Korean War. It wanted the Korean Peninsula as a communism buffer in which they didn't want the outer forces, the capitalist forces of the United States and other Western nations to come in and infringe on the Korean Peninsula because that would be militarily and security, politically, economically bad for them. And secondly, China wanted to maintain its role as the world power of the East. And finally, it was allies with North Korea in which during the Chinese Civil War, North Korea acted as like sort of a resting area for communist leaders who were fleeing from China. And because of this duty, China became an ally of North Korea and helped Korea in its own civil war. And Japan had its own set of benefits and interests in which they wanted to use the Korean Peninsula as a capitalism border. And this would be more of a US policy. And Japan was seeking to become, once again, the world power of the East. After the they lost the World War II. Japan lost its authority as the key power in East Asia. And through the Korean War, Japan wanted to reseek their position of power. And through the Korean War, Japan wanted to expand its market. And it actually did, where Japanese factories manufactured war goods. And from the profit, they were able to recover their economy. And last, this is a common interest for both kind of, in which Japan didn't want another war proliferating after they just lost another war. Interest. And meanwhile, while the war was going out and China and Japan were serving their own interests, the interest of the Korean nation was ignored. And these interests and stakes mainly are outlined for South Korea. So the interest of Korea was no communism, no China. They, coming out from the war, the Second World War, they wanted to become a sovereign nation with a sovereign government with the authority to self-determine their own future. And they thought having another foreign power inside would keep them from being able to act out their own decision. And also being a newborn nation, Korea wanted to have a productive economy. However, there were stakes. By trying to serve their interests, they would become a divided nation, the North would have to go, and they would become dependent on either Japan or the USA. And lastly, they would have an uncompetitive market because as Japan was already selling war goods to Korea, Korea would become highly dependent on Japan or USA's market. So therefore, in the Korean War, Korea only had two options. First was to fight without the aid of foreign countries, fight independently. However, this would make Korea lose the war as we saw in the prior diagram Without the aid of foreign forces, Korea would have lost the war. And second option was fight with the aid of foreign countries. But as we analyzed the states before, that would mean that they would become dependent economically and security-wise. And this is an example of the alliance between US and Korea that still lasts today. So throughout the 70s and until today, 
South Korea and U.S. are tied together by the Mutual Defense Agreement, in which the United States is helping provide physical security for the Koreans using both their bases in South Korea and bases in Japan. They're another ally. Start. Okay, so the na next game will um, start in the Arena Maritime Arena 2 Maritime Disputes. And as you can see in this picture, um, both Japan and China are claiming um, their own territories in either the either so-called the Senkaku Islands um, by Japan and the Daioyu Islands by China. And you can see the disputed area highlighted in orange. Yeah. Okay, so the two sides. First, China. Um, China China's um, interest is mainly on claiming sovereignty over the Daioyu Islands or the Senkaku Islands, and um, they're other interest is um, creating official Chinese maps after 1945, which recognized Daioyu Islands as Jap Japanese territory. And Japan um, also had um, interest in proving the validity of their control over their Senkaku Islands, uh, but they also believed that um, no resolutions was needed on improving this because the island had always been theirs and it was un uninhabited prior to 1895. This issue remains undecided um, and it's the debate is still going on until today. Um, the interest that Korea had um, regarding this issue in East Asia um, was to reaffirm Dokdo to be Korea's island, retrieving the East Sea from Japan, and terminating Chinese illegal fishing in EEZ, or also called um, external economic zones in other nations, and some risks or stakes that they faced um, while to achieve their interest was first that they were a divided nation because Korea is a divided nation it has less power um, than the Japan and China which has like much more political and economic powers and also um, Korea was too dependent on Japan and United States of America so you not, um, the US's uh, stance is very important um, in making decisions for Korea. But for this issue, US has claimed to have no stance. Um, so that was a risk. And also, um, over the Dokdo Island, Japan had named it uh, Takeshima Island, which was later um, also, uh, it brought up a lot of political rebellions. So they all, Korea again faced with two options. First was to fight back to reclaim the authorized territories um, through protest. And two was to remain mute because there was no reason to fight since um, they believed that Korea, Adokdo Island was already Korea's territory. So um, in fighting back to reclaim the authorized territories, they chose this as their um, choice and um, Therefore, as you can see in this picture, um, the Koreans decided to rebel against um, the uh, naming of the Takeshima, Takeshima Island. And so they protested the creation of Takeshima Day by Japan's Shimane Prefecture, the entry of Japanese planes near the islands, and the dispatch of Japanese Coast Guard vessels to conduct hydrographic surveys near the disputed islands. So um, the Koreans believed that um, the colonization was only a past, it was only a, merely a history, so it should not be considered in today's times. Start. Start. The third arena is the trilateral relations. And in this arena, we'll be analyzing the relations between three nations, China, Japan, and Korea, and maybe a fourth, the United States. As you can see in this graph, this shows and analyzes the military forces of Japan, Taiwan, and China. And you can see that China outweighs the military forces of any other country in East Asia by a ton. Japan, whose second ranking in East Asia for military funding is $60 billion, while China is $142 billion. And this we analyzed this arena on two different levels, not only security, but economy, where here you can see that Korea's import sources, China takes up 16.5%, while export destinations, China takes up 24%, outweighing any other country that Korea trades with. This is how much Korea is interlinked with China. And considering these concerns, 
we need to analyze now together the physical, security, and economic parts of this issue. China's interests are in maintenance of peace. They do not want a nuclear arms race in East Asia. And by nuclear arms race, they are worried about the North Koreans developing a nuclear weapon, which would urge other nations such as Japan and China, Japan and Korea, to develop their own weapons to fight against it. And they want to maintain their position as an Asian world power as they are today. Also, China is waiting for trade expansion, and it has listed in 2001 to be accepted to the World Trading Organization. And through that, they would be able to trade with more markets around the world. Japan has its own interest, competing with China as an Eastern world power, because after Japan's economic recession, their authority as a world power in East Asia has declined. Also, Japan, similarly with China, doesn't want a nuclear arms race in the East, and they are waiting for economic recovery and market expansion. And finally, Japan is like the U.S. representative of the East, where their policies reflect U.S. interests concerning Asia. And between these two, the interest Korea wants to serve is ambiguous. And before we continue, this is the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. And prior to this, China, Japan, and Korea have been negotiating a free trade agreement. And on top of that, there's another free trade agreement that is being negotiated between the United States, Japan, and Korea. However, Korea is hesitant to join because of the following reasons. Its interest is keeping the Korean Peninsula free of nuclear weapons. And second, it wants to maintain a military alliance with Japan and U.S. to deter the North Korea. And third, it wants to maintain a peaceful relationship with North Korea through China. As China has authority over North Korea, it wants to maintain good relationship with Beijing so they wouldn't have a war or an unexpected war. And finally, of their interest, Korea wants to expand and balance their trade because as we have seen before, their trade is too focused on China and they want to balance that through the trade trans-Pacific partnership. And stakes involved for Korea is that China is diplomatically crucial in their well-being, for their security. Because without consulting Beijing, they wouldn't be able to talk with North Korea either. However, Japan and USA are the two countries that are actually crucial to their physical safety, as US forces are here in Korea as well as Japan. And domestic markets can be harmed by more free trade agreements, and they do not want to become any more dependent than they already are. So Korea has a few options. First is to depend on China for physical security and turn for economic exchange. And this one is one that Korea wouldn't decide because of their strong ties to the United States. So a second option might arise, to ally with Japan through free trade to balance China's economy. And I highlighted this in blue because this would be a possible option that Korea might be able to take. Allied with Japan, they might be able to counter China's growth in East Asia. However, more free trade with Japan would damage the domestic industry of Korea. So a third option, try to separate North Korea from China's sphere of influence. As there have been tensions between China and North Korea lately, if South Korea is able to manipulate the diplomatic relationships between China and North Korea, then it would only have to approach North Korea instead of China as well as a security concern. Fourth, join TPP and give up on economic exchange with China and broaden market. China is countering the TPP, so joining the TPP would break all relationships with China, which means their economic relationship would be very damaged. However, this is highlighted in red because this is how the negotiations are currently continuing and this is probably the most likely route that Korea will be taking. However, a better option would be fifth, wait out until the economy strengthens. If South Korea is able to wait out until their domestic market is good enough and balanced enough to engage in international trade with other countries more than China, then it would be able to balance out the TPP and the security concerns. And these are U.S. military forces here in Korea, helping Korea's physical security. In the end, nothing is just black or white. We should continue to keep changing ourselves. And this is our camouflage. Thank you.